In this video, I'm going to show an example of binary recursion implemented to solve the ith value of the Fibonacci sequence. And then I'm going to show an animation where this recursive trace is implemented with the instruction stack and the registers. So first what I would like to do is I'd like to show you the main function. So down in main, I've created an unsigned integer value of 5. And then I do C out in endl and I call a function fib that passes value. And it will print out the result. So now I'm going to go up to fib and show you how this code works. So it takes in an unsigned integer. And there are two different base cases. The first base case is if i is equal to 0, I return 1. The second base case is if i is equal to 1, I also return 1. Because recall that the Fibonacci sequence takes these first two numbers and then adds the next two in the sequence. So when I pass 5, I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, so this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when I put in 5, it will return the value 8. But the way this is actually working is that it passes 5, and then if i minus 1 and i minus 2, so it's going to pass 4 and 3. 4 is going to pass 3 and 2, 2 and 1, 1 and 0 then 2 is going to pass 1 and 0 as well. 3 is going to pass uh, 1, uh, 2 and 1. This would be 1 and 0. So then what's going to happen is, how many cases do I encounter? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, which is how we're going to get 8 in this solution. So when I run this code, it does in fact produce 8. So now let's take a look at this animation and see how this is actually going to work. I've put a copy of main onto the instruction stack and then I'm going to call fib. In this animation on the right hand side you see the instruction stack and the registers and in the middle you're going to see the recursive trace that I just drew out and how it's going along. So what's going to happen is when I go to double, it's going to produce a register. And for simplicity, I've combined the two registers into one. I have the input and the return. So you see returns here, and n equals 5 is up here. So then if we don't have either base case. So then I put fib n minus 1. So now I'm going to 4, I'm going to the left. I then create those registers, don't hit either base case, then I do n minus 1, I'm now at 3, do the same thing, now I'm at 2, now I do n minus 1, and then when I get here, n is equal to 1, so I'm going to hit this base case. So now I'm going to return 1, and I'm going to remove that call from the stack, and now I'm in the next call, which is fib2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do that n minus 2. And now you can see on the instruction stack that fib0 is now the top. 0 will hit the first base case and return 1. So now you can see here that I'm going to return 1 minus 1. I mean 1 plus 1, excuse me. So now that's going to return to and remove that from the stack. So now it's going to do the same thing with 1, and you can follow the pattern here. Now that we're done with 3, it's going to go up to 4, but now it's going to make the right-hand call, the other binary recursion, to f of 2. And you're going to see that it's going to, again, call 1 and 0. So now it's going to, again, return 1 plus 1. Here it's going to return 2. So now you're going to see over here that it's going to become 3 plus 2, which will give us 5. Now we do go right here for f is 5. And then we do the same thing as before. You're going to see that this is going to be 1 plus 1 here. 
and then it goes up. So now we have two. F of one is going to return one here. So now we have two plus one, that's going to return three. So now when we call it, we get five plus three here, which means that we are going to return eight to main. And then after we're done, we remove all the instructions from the instruction stack and from the operating system that we're done.